So when we let go of Kenny, uh, we knew right away that we pretty much would try to pick up uh, one of the Echo Fox players. We kind of always knew that like, like we kind of respected them as players and what they're capable of doing like bef before we made that change. So like as soon as we let go of Kenny, we were looking at Praised or Solars. And then a couple, like about a week and a half into like that whole process, um, IC decided to leave our team. So we were like, huh, well, instead of Solars or Praise, why not just pick up both of them? And well, that's what we did. You know, obviously with, with the change in, in having to part ways with Kenny Bounce, uh, you know, and Icy, Icy have Icy going to Echo Fox, we picked up Solars and Praised which I'm excited about because these two dudes are obviously, you know, fierce competitors, people that we've gone up against that, you know, made an impact in the way that we played in, uh, in, in the tournaments. We always knew that there were threats. So the fact that we have this team and the fact that we just won a 2K, like gives me the, the, the utmost confidence in the fact that, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be having a good season. Hopefully get back into, into, into the realm of, of always placing first at every single event. Um, I do appreciate the fact that, you know, that there was, that there was, that there's always room for change and it's good to mix things up. Uh, not only just for optic, but as, as an esport, when you have the same team winning over and over and over again, it's, uh, it's good to, to, you know, spread out the talent, diversify the talent amongst our team. So, uh, obviously I'm always, always going to be, you know, very, very clear about the fact that I'm going to miss Kenny. Kenny was such a, such a good dude. I said, I didn't get to know as much as the other guys, but you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, I am. So, you know, not, not with the new team. I, th I feel very, very confident in the fact that, that we could get back to the number one spot regularly and consistently. I think it was the night that Vision, or like last week, where it showed like a sneak peek of all of us on the couch. Yeah, that night we scrimmed Echo Fox for the first time, and seeing Ice and Kenny on the other side and the other team is actually kind of like weird. I'm not used to playing them. I've teamed with Kenny forever and Icy like for like a year. So like it was kind of weird um, getting to like play against them and like know their play styles even more. Like, you know, playing against them, it's different than like, like spectating them on your team. So like fighting them's different. You gotta learn how they play. So like, you know, but it's weird for sure. And we're doing really well against them, so. Going to NOLA, I definitely want to play Echo Fox and Land because um, they're a very talkative team, I guess. Like I see, I know Kenny wants revenge too. Um, even like, we're, we're teaming with uh, Brian and Praise now and for them to be playing against Fran and Kyle as well, that means a lot to them as well. So like, this is gonna be a huge match we play on land. I'm just hoping they get far enough to play us because lately they haven't been playing well at all. So uh, yeah, but looking forward to playing them if we do. Winning the 2K kind of wasn't like a confidence boost for us, and it also wasn't kind of like, oh, like, like we need to work on things. Um, we kind of knew going into this that we would like, I feel like everybody knows that we're some of the best skilled players in the game. So I feel like it was never really about like, like doing good. It's, it's really about how good we can do when it comes to this team. In the 2K, we played against um, United, which has pretty much been like one of the top teams since coming back from Vegas. And uh, we actually also beat Ghost Gaming in the finals. So uh, both of those wins were very good for us. Before NOLA or lean up to the event, we have about one or two, I would say two or three actually, 2Ks left probably. And other than that, just scrims, maybe like team wages if we can get some in. So nothing too serious. So there's not gonna be like that competition, I guess, like land competition level. So like nothing really like shows until land. That's where it matters. So yeah, we're just waiting for that. And that's where we're gonna prove we're the best team. Burbank kind of started, I mean the online qualifiers started with what, 360 North American teams? Yeah, I think so. Um, so basically open registration, but the Burbank was kind of the 20 qualifying teams from that. So think of think of that as kind of the, the regional finals. Um, so the, the top three from Burbank go to Berlin for uh, PUBG's first major yeah. um, tournament, even though there's obviously been 
um, other big tournaments and whatnot. But um, yeah, Berlin's for two million. Um, basically, taking twenty teams from all over the world. There's three NA, three U, uh, two CIS. Yeah. Uh, loads of Asian teams and South American teams. Yeah. Um, basically, the the biggest PUBG event so far. Um, obviously, the the prize pool kind of speaks for itself as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it was the it was the first opportunity to kind of get or solidify our names kind of at, at, at the top of competitive PUBG, I guess. I, I don't know if I'd say like I was overconfident, but I, I definitely felt like the event should have been easy for us. Um, we've we've done well on like uh, what I would assume would be the tougher events when we have teams from Europe as well. Uh, they're arguably the the better teams uh, phase, obviously. Um, so. To me, it seemed like if we were just playing against uh, teams from North America, it should be like, not to be rude, but like we, the competition should be slightly lower than if it were a mix of well, it's, uh, it's, it's European as well. Yeah, it's familiar territory as well. When you when you play against the same teams week in week out, a game like PUBG, it's um, it's easy to pick up on teams' tendencies, and you know you can you can set up things to counter that or, or read into that so we've done a lot of preparation around the teams that we play with so uh, day one got underway we um, we actually had a, a pretty rough start to game one option right now profi gonna get rezzed steezy bb just crawling in but they had the rest first they're going for the push here it comes coming off two different angles venerator tries oh. to go for it he gets taken down now that means that optic is going to be in full on control it's just steezy hiding back behind them see if he can do any damage onto it this is a full know. four man oh, squad he tries he does set his team in second place and i gotta say nice performance coming out that round from optic thank you very much i've got valiate here i think it came down to us versus Ghost at the end, and then there was one solo fly quest on the military circle. Yeah, played that one really well. That was a huge confidence boost. We all came out of that smiling. Well, part, part of that one, we almost we almost had issues because we ran into. That was the one we ran into Cloud Nine on the beach. Yeah, yeah. So we, we we did have a couple of problems along the way, but we we played it really well. Um, especially seeing as military circles are usually our worst games. Um, it was it was a huge confidence boost to win that one. Uh, unfortunately, we had. The, the last two games on day one were were really bad. Um, I think we got we got caught off guard in game three on rotations, rotations to the first circle. Um, I think we lost one, and then two of us were stuck without vehicles, and it just it just went downhill from there. You know, the, the issue right now with our PUBG team is the fact that you know it's a new team. You know, uh, and and as such. And people dismiss the fact that, you know, people just think that because they're professional players, they're going to be able to just gel because that's their job to gel. And they're just going to be able to compete with each other because that's their job to do. But it's, that's not the way things work, you know. But chemistry has a lot, a lot to do with in-game comfort and in-game uh, strategy as, as, as the most basic part of competition and for us to have made the change that we made uh you know it, it affected us and it showed through the weekend unfortunately we did we won one game on the first day i think two and uh, on the second we shit the bed one day and then we try to come back on a sunday and it just it just didn't happen and, and that's the way things work right if if and that's the way it'll always work with with rng games you know the, the you just never know what sort of loot's going to be where. And, and, and you can prepare as much as you can. You can strategize as much as you can. But once you land, it's a completely different game. You know, it's a, it never goes the way that you... Okay, let me rephrase that. It's rare, the occasion, where everything goes the way you plan to go. So for us, it was, it was a tough showing. It was, it was bad. Um, it, it, but it is what it is. You know, it is a competition. Somebody was better than us, and we'll continue to strive to be better than we were the last tournament. Uh, and if it happens, awesome. If it doesn't, then it's it's really easy to to sit there and think about all the mistakes that you made. Uh, the hard part is putting it behind you and and just putting your head down, getting back to practice, and then just hope hope that you're more prepared and things go your way on the next tournament. So for us, looking back is not something that we'd like to do unless it's to learn from our mistakes. So we're gonna keep going forward and hopefully we can come up with a, with a champion. I think we're overdue, we're long overdue for a championship in PUBG. There's still time, is, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for the future of our PUBG team.
How, how do you set up an office in Los Angeles uh, is actually one of the big challenges we had to face back in November, December. Um, so it, it goes down to the main question, do we go in a gaming house or do we go in an office with apartment right next door? Um, at the end of the day, a gaming house is cheaper uh, because you don't have to rent a full open space and a couple of apartments. Um, but the problem is in LA, you need to convince someone that you're going to arrive in the gaming house with a lot of boys. And most of the time they're like, how old are they? Uh, they're young. Only guys? Uh, that's really weird. You guys are going to party all the time. And so we're trying to explain to them, we're not going to party. We pay them to play video games the whole day and they don't move because they are a geek. Of course, no one believes us. Uh, and we had not enough people to help search in November, December, whatever. At the end of the day, we ended up in a really crappy place. Uh, I mean, good, good, good place, but way too small for whatever we wanted to, to, to create there and to achieve there. Um, so the first split was a bit messy, uh, to my opinion, um, because we ended up poorly at the bottom of the standings. We had a lot of time during off season. Um, so we, we managed to find a new office using the proper people in town, so using um, a real estate agent or so people like that, so helping us with creating the paperwork and everything. We were supposed to have a first office, uh, we were really happy about it, but for whatever reason it got cancelled and we were like, oh my god, uh, we need to move every, everything in in the next two weeks, what's going to happen? And suddenly the real estate agent called us back and said, guys, have this office, you're going to love it. We're like, hey, okay, I mean, that's just going to be the 15 office we're going to visit this week. So, okay, we follow you. And we fell in love with it. Like, like 11th floor, uh, the view, we have a lot of space. So it allows us to finally create a really nice working environment. And what does, that, what does it mean is, um, I think it's important if player can um, cut between I play solo queue, so my own practice, and I play with my team versus another team to learn the game. So this is happening in a specific scrimming room. As soon as they are done with a pro training, they go in a review room with a coach and stuff. And as soon as they are done with what's the real part of the work, they can go back. It's a big open space where it's more casual solo queue. You talk with your friend and stuff. So a bit like if you were in a, in a real job, you have the place where you chill a bit and you have the, the, fight, the, the, the fighting ring, actually. That could work for box. If you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a boxing area, you have the place where you do that and the place where you're on stage. So that's a bit what we wanted to create to, to reinforce this feeling of we are at work. Yes, it's probably one of the best jobs in the world, but it doesn't mean it's an easy job. It's a hard job. You have to be dedicated. You have to commit to it. And this new infrastructure is definitely helping us to, to enforce that. It is funny, now that your mom's here, our, our like apartment actually looks like people live there now. Yeah, my mom bought so yeah, much. She bought so much food. Yeah, uh, she <laughs> told me that you should be free to take whatever you want. Ah, okay. No, she actually said like multiple times. That's so yeah. funny. That's definitely you know it's a cliche of mom you know coming in. Yeah. No, oh, actually, can you leave like that? Yeah. Oh, you know I drink coke and I eat the curry. curry I do what <laughs> dude, you dude, like literally, no, literally our, like, yeah. our apartment is literally like a, a straight up bachelor pad. We have like. We have like ham in the, in the fridge and Coke and Sprite, and then we just have like we just sleep there. We just sleep there. We just sleep there and we leave. Yeah. He's the main carry. If he's not able to stand there, then there's something wrong with the front line feeling for him in the position of a fight. But Poe, he's the he is the team of optic right now. He's gonna try to come up huge. All tech. Very big heal coming off his two. Thanks oh. again. Arrow with the kill. Arrow now kiting backwards. The help of Alorum. And there's power of able to fight as well. There's the double kill. Phoenix about to go down. Or rally Cooney, rather, about to go down. Guardian Angel will come up as Altec has made his way out the top of the fight. A few more shots as Arrow flashes forward to secure this one for the team. And that potentially is game. There's a lot of damage from PoE. They also have the Lucian here too. They're gonna push. These Nexus turrets are not that strong anymore. And Altec is the only one up for 10 more seconds. Optic has kept Fox's back against the ropes the entire game. They will take out the last member alive as Fung just they about to spawn. They did it. Echo Fox goes down and Optic take the victory. Woo, you can see the elation there, man. The funnel strap paid off. They said, let's make no, it. Literally, literally, your call really that it's awesome. losing like two seconds after it started probably saved the game. <laughs> yeah, they were good. like, oh my god, why is he running? He's the lane. Have you been to the Heidelberg? I, uh, of course. Yes. Yeah. And I've been as well. I'm not as fine as fine. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Have you seen the Grand Canyon? No, I'm not the American. Okay, then. 
Why haven't you? Why haven't you? Why haven't you? Chase, don't you know the PD? Give me one good reason why you haven't. Because the Grand Canyon is some fucking like EU tour shit, you know? Like, bro, you're blaming your own. Bro, it lives here. The it Grand Canyon it. lives in fucking Arizona, bro. Like, if I want to go see it, I can just drive and go see it. But it didn't. But I'm not interested. <laughs> but it didn't. But I'm not interested. He huh? doesn't like his, his country. This is why I understand. So, yeah, he doesn't understand. like his country. You <laughs> hate America. Fuck, he doesn't hate America. Holy shit. Holy yeah, shit. I hate America, guys. You actually hate your country. So I can, can, <laughs> do, you hate, do you hate America? Can you say it? I love Look America. at the camera, Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> say it. Say it. You can say it. I love America. <laughs> You know, us being as new as we are to League of Legends, I, 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 I expected it to be, you know, hard. I didn't expect it to be smooth sailing, you know, no, only, only dummies think that way, and I'm, not, I'm no dummy. Uh, I knew that it was going to be difficult, um, but I didn't think it was going to be as difficult as it is, as it has been. Like, the, the first play, we had uh, the second to last record, right? The worst record in the, in the league. Um, and then just now, you know, we, we, we're, I think, 2-2 in the league, having, could have been 3-1, but we choked one map against FlyQuest, which, which happens. You know, yeah, I, I don't even like calling, like, there, there, there's very, very small times where you can call something a choke, um, especially an individual choke. In, in, the, in scenarios, in every single esports there, there, there's just the way that the, the team goes, you know? Like, it, it, it's rare to pinpoint a, a literal choke. In, the, in this case, we're not going to say that we, that we choked as much as that we just missed an opportunity that, that, that we could have capitalized on to, to be 3-1 so far. But, you know, it is what it is. I think that we have uh, 100 thieves within the next couple of weeks. I'm going to fly out to, to L.A. to make sure that I'm sitting next to, to the little bro, Nate Shot, to make sure that, you know, he feels my presence. And by osmosis, feels intimidated by just me being there. I don't know. We'll see. I'm super excited about it. Uh, it's always a fun time when we, when we play against Nate, so super psyched about that. The game League of Legends at the moment is living a really interesting time um, from both a business and in-game perspective. So from a business perspective, why with the, uh, Europe is about to be franchised, we, we're going to have we're going to have to efficiently analyze what happened in North America after this first year of franchising. Uh, from us, from an optic perspective, um, in a couple of months, we're going to have to sit down around the table and talk about, okay, how was this first year? What have we done right? What have we done wrong? And I believe this between split, what happened for the last month, was really important because now we created an infrastructure we are proud of and I believe is going to be able to produce results. So, and to carry on for 2019 and so on, because once again, it's a franchise system. So whatever you do properly, you need to be able to carry it on and on. So um, I'm really excited for the incoming season. Uh, I think we're going to do really, really well. And the goal is definitely to build for the long term and to make optics solid. Mm -hmm.